Welcome to another episode of the Straight Up Chicago Investor Podcast. I'm Tom Shellcross, licensed agent with Second City Real Estate. With me as always is Mark Ainley, founder and owner of GC Realty. Mark, what do you want our subscribers to do? Smash that subscribe button and slam that, that like. <laughs> I guess if they're already subscribers, they don't need to hit the subscribe button. I didn't no, 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 no. That. Don't do that. You unsubscribe. Have a friend. <laughs> smash that subscribe button. Well, we're a little giddy over here because this is episode 150. We'll take that as a milestone. Yes. Yes. 150. And, and I'm going to record this before uh, next week's event, but uh, I'm predicting that we had a great time last Thursday <laughs> and it was great uh, hanging out with all of our listeners. Yeah. We're looking for, excited for this. We're recording this a few days before the event. By the time this airs, it'll obviously have come and gone. Um, but we're excited to see you all. And then uh, on the topic of events, then, if you're looking for more to do, I know uh, Windy City REI, they are hosting the GOB Network Multifamily Conference July 13th and 14th uh, at the Westin out at O'Hare. If you use the promo code Windy City REI, all one word, you have a special dis- discount there. I think there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of investors from the Midwest there. So shout out to our friends at Windy City REI, uh, great people over there. And uh, we'll, we'll link to the event uh, for July 13th and 14th. Uh, out by O'Hare. It's going to be an exciting event. This will be like the biggest like event since uh, Bree and Kasman did their event as far as people goes in, in here in the, in uh, Chicago. So it's going to be pretty, pretty cool gathering. It, it, man, it feels good to be coming back. Doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. You know, I, I still, uh, <laughs> every time I get out of the car to walk in somewhere, like I still have that, Oh, do I need my mask? Like moment. <laughs> and then I feel like so naked walking in places with, with uh, out of still. So it still have that kind of, like adjustment period. It's funny how, how you have to adjust to not wearing it even just, but you had to adjust to wearing it. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, feels good to be out there. It feels good to have summer in Chicago here. Um, if you, if you are hosting events or thinking of starting up an event, let us know. We, we link to all of them on our page here um, at the straight up Chicago investor.com. If, if there's anything you want to promote, that's going to provide value to the people listening, feel free to reach out to us directly and we can, we can be that platform for you. So with that said, Mark, uh, adding value, give us a, a housing provider tip of the week here. Retention. So uh, the most expensive item in your year-end numbers is always going to be turnover. So if you can find ways to re- uh, retain your current tenants, that's valuable. Especially right now, I think there's certain tricks you can do. Tricks, uh, approaches, however you want to word it. I don't mean to sound negative there, but uh, you know, tenants right now, they're up against your increase or moving and probably getting a larger increase, but they might not aware of the latter. So right now what we're doing is for our residents at GC Realty, if we have a uh, tenant that's kind of slow to signing the renewal, uh, we'll share with them the comps of the properties that are going nearby and, and what those are going for. Because often we're giving them a bump that might not be what we would get if we were going to renew it, but we're giving them just enough that we'll get a good increase and there'll be less than them having to move. So, uh, and they'll take that consideration. So when they're not signing right away, we are going back to them saying, hey, listen, you're, you're like property down the street, just rented for $110 more or $75 more. And a lot of residents are not aware of what's going on with that. So use that as your advantage. Now, also as a incentive is, hey, re-sign your lease renewal now because you know three months rents might be higher. I might have to be hired right now in three months and I'm giving you right now. So you can almost frame what you're offering as an increase as a deal because rents are going up and, and it could go uh, even more if they don't do it sooner than later. Yeah. No, I, I like that. I, I recently had one, uh, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I said, listen, you know, it's going to be 2450 or I'm going to be putting this on Zillow tomorrow at 2600, right? Like, you know, just to show you're still getting the hometown discount here. It's, it's higher than what you're paying, but it's still going to be less than, you know, the next person that walks the door or it, in theory, the equal product somewhere else, because you're getting, you're still getting a deal and everyone wins here. And it's good business. So no different than you're just giving all the, the information out there now um, and, and making sure they know what their options, you're helping them understand what their options are. So they're not doing it on their clock, which ultimately is going to uh, take longer for you to get what you're trying to get done. Yeah. Good stuff. Mark. We got a heavy hitter alert here. We do. Yeah, I don't know if we need an intro, but we'll do a quick one. So our guest today uh, soared from humble beginnings as a young Dutch immigrant to incredible success, owning over 2,000 properties. His experience involves both remarkable triumphs uh, and and spectacular failures, which we'll cover both of. He's an investor, consultant, a high-performance coach. He's the host of the Lifetime Cashflow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast, which is a top-ranked real estate podcast on iTunes. Without further ado, 
Rod Cleef, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, heavy hitter is right. I need to lose about 20 pounds. But uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, I appreciate you guys having me on. Let's have some fun today. Yeah, let's do it. So, Rod, most of our listeners know you. They Most of them are probably, you know, avid fans of the podcast. But for those who don't, talk us through, you know, you you got started before the original Great Recession in, in 08. And I think, you know, I can't remember the exact numbers, but ended up getting your nose bloody there. I'll steal your line. Uh, lost $50 million. Like, talk us through that rise and fall and then the rise again. It's, it's just sure. a great story. Go ahead. The mic is yours sure. for five minutes here. Okay. Well, um, let me go way back, if you don't mind, Tom, because I think it'll lend some framework to what we're going to talk about. So let me let me actually start when I first immigrated here. I was six years old, was born in the Netherlands, you know, wooden shoes and windmills and immigrated with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vansha, ended up in Denver, Colorado. And we really struggled initially. I, I mean, I, I wore clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army and we ate expired food and drank powdered milk with our cereal in the morning. And I'm sure you've got listeners had it tougher than we did, but, you know, I, I wanted more. And luckily, you know, I had a mom that had an incredible work ethic. So she babysat kids. So we'd have, you know, money to eat and things like that. And with her babysitting money, she was an entrepreneur. So she invested in the stock market successfully. She did IPOs and she also invested in real estate. And her first real estate acquisition was a house directly across the street from us. When I was 14, she paid about $30,000. And when I was 17, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep. I'm like, what? It went up in value. You made 20 grand. You didn't do anything? Screw college. I'm getting into real estate. So I got into real estate. Well, my first year in real estate, I made about eight grand. My second year, maybe $10,000. But my third year, I made over $100,000. And this is 1980, which pretty decent money back then. So what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10x my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy. I was actually dating his daughter. And um, he taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology, how really 80 to 90% of your success in anything is your mindset and your psychology. So I'm leading into how I was able to recover from from what you just talked about. You know, fast forward to today, like you said, I've owned over 2,000 houses uh, that I've owned long term, but I've also, you know, I own thousands of apartment units as well. Um, And in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. And you might say, wow. And I said, wow. And I thought I was a freaking real estate god. My head got so big, I could barely fit it through a door. And you know when that happens? God of the universe will give you a nice little smack. Well, that was 2008. That's when I lost $50 million. And so what I'm known for talking about on my podcast and my boot camps is, is the, you know, the really the mindset and the psychology it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place. And maybe as important, maybe even more important is the mindset to recover from losing $50 million. I mean, there were people that killed themselves for losing the same proportionately in the great depression and, and even in the 08, nine crash. And so, yeah, if you want to drill down on some of that, I think it's relevant because we are heading into a crash. There's no question. We're heading into a recession. I think it's going to be bigger than people think. A lot of people are saying it's not going to be a big deal. There are a lot of reasons to think that, but I don't know. It feels a lot like 06 to me again. So do you want to maybe talk about some of the mindset to get through yep. this? Yeah, let's jump in. So one, let's start with a question. No, now that you have hindsight in your back pocket, you've gone through this before, you know, what would you do differently or what lesson have you learned that you're now walking in today saying, hey, if a recession hits, I'm well prepared. I'm feeling good about it. Great question. Uh, and, and you know, like right now I'm in a lot of cash, okay? And I hate it because it's going down every single day, it feels like with inflation. But, you know, during a crisis, cash is king. And there's a, cri- there's a crash coming. There's just no question that there's a crash coming. And, and uh, you know, how bad it's going to be, I don't know. I, I mean, there are a lot of people that don't think it's going to be too bad. It's a lot of the you know, demographic, I'm sorry, demographics, but a lot of the stats, you know, there's still a big housing demand, need for housing. There's a shortage of housing, you know, unemployment is still good, but we're going to start seeing layoffs. And, and I, you know, inflation is still crazy. You know, the, the, the Fed thinks that, that, you know, these rate increases are going to be enough. I hope it is, you know, the Fed's talking about another five rate increases um, here um, that's, that's what's planned. And they're talking about another 50 to 75 basis points in July. And we, of course, we all know it just went up 75 basis points a week ago. So, you know, there's a lot of turmoil in the debt markets. Um, and so how did I get ready? Well, how I got ready was, or how I was able to pivot at that time was, was, 
paying attention to my focus, number one, being very clear on what I wanted and why I wanted it, because it would have been real easy to focus on what I didn't want. So as it relates to this upcoming crisis, make sure you're real clear on what you want. You know, clarity is power. Have, have, make sure you've done your goals, you've done your whys. And, you know, I've got a boot camp coming at the end of July. The first thing we do is goal setting. And so, you know, make sure you've done that. And, and because it's going to be easy to focus on fear. And, you know, if you're, if you're watching Tom and Mark here or listening, you're a leader. And right now the world needs leaders more than ever. We don't get me started on the freaking media, the fake news and all the crap they're putting out there. You know, you got to stand guard at the door to your mind, bring in the good stuff. You know, um, my podcast, it's called Lifetime Cashflow Through Real Estate Investing. Every week I do a clip called Own Your Power. And it's about just that motivation. And, 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 and it's five minutes. You give me five minutes a week, I'll juice you. Uh, there's hundreds of them there. I'm really proud of them. And, um, you know, we just broke 13 million downloads on there. So I'm really proud of that as well. We had our 700th episode last year. It's funny. You want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. I never planned to have it do any of that. I did it just to tell people about my story. Because when I lost everything in 2008, and nine, it was my houses that pulled me down. I had 800 houses and some apartments and the houses, you know, made the whole thing implode. So I was like, you know, I started my podcast to tell people if you're going to buy and hold for God's sakes, do multifamily. And, um, and here we are, but, um, but anyway, so it's right now. And again, you're listening to these guys, you're a leader. So pay attention to what you're focused on. Bring in the, like I say, bring in the good stuff, go on YouTube, bring in that stuff. You know, you got to pay attention to the headlines, but don't live there because whatever you focus on gets larger, positive or negative. And so it's really important that you manage that. Uh, you know, they asked Mother Teresa when she was live, if she was anti-war, she said, no, I'm pro-peace. You know, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. I'll, I'll get people call me and say, I'm trying to get out of student loan debt. I'm like, wrong statement. Tell me, figure, focus on making so much money, the debt's irrelevant. Okay. And so focus is critical. But so that's one piece that I already talked about goals. Goals are critical. And by the way, um, I do, a, I do a goal setting workshop every year on the, on New Year's day or the year, the day after or something like that. This year was on New Year's day. If you go to rodslinks.com, it's free. You can, uh, I'll guide you through doing your goals. There's a guide you can download. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. It's just a, a service I want to provide. It's really professionally done. It's really good because again, you need to know, you be, need to be clear on what you want. Why? Because there's going to be a lot of fear out there and you need to create what Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich calls a burning desire. You need to be able to push through that fear, push through any limiting beliefs that you have. Like when I immigrated, when I was six, I got thrown into school. I didn't speak English. And I found out what bullies were for the first time. So I got my butt kicked. And then my mom thought it'd be a great idea, proud Dutch woman that she is, to send me to school in wooden shoes and those leather shorts the Germans wear for, for Oktoberfest, the lederhosen. Got my butt kicked again. And then, my, then, then they chased me home and she chased them off with a fly swatter thinking she was helping me next day, butt kicking again. So, you know, I, I came up with this belief system that I wasn't good enough. And so, you know, again, you've got to create that burning desire to push through stuff like that. A lot of people have these limiting beliefs and, you know, like I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough is a big one. I'm, you know, I'm not analytical enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. And there's a reason that the acronym for belief systems is BS because 99.9% .9 of them are, but you've got to recognize them pull them out in the daylight with your adult rational mind, look at them consciously, and you'll be able to diminish them. I mean, I used to be horrified if I got called on in class, and now I speak in front of thousands of people a year. So, you know, but I, but I consciously diminished it. I, I, and you can do that with any of these limiting beliefs. Um, so, so mindset, though, you were, yeah. you're talking a lot about mindset, and that's a lot of what you're known for. Mm -hmm. Nature versus nurture. Are you saying that anybody can change their mindset and it's not something you had to come from for a cer certain area or have certain uh, problems? Uh, no, I, I'm saying I'm saying you absolutely can push through anything with mindset. And um, yeah. and again, if you've got one of these limiting beliefs, you've got to just consciously look at it. You know, I, I was afraid of being rejected or humiliated. And I had to come to the realization anybody that would reject me just didn't know me. OK, or they have their own crap going on. And so if you've got one of these, maybe I'm too old. Well, old age is wisdom. OK, you're wise. Or I'm too young. Well, I've got you've got more energy than any of the rest of us. You've just got to rationally look at these limiting beliefs that you have. And and like I say, and push past them. But you know, that's how I was able to recover from losing $50 million by getting realigned with what I wanted and why I wanted it. My goals, like I said, and I could, again, go to Rod's links and you can download that and, and watch it. You'll really like it. 
um, paying attention to my focus, making sure I was focused on what I wanted, not what I didn't want. Because again, whatever you focus on gets bigger, positive or negative. Um, my peer group, super important. You know, back then when I was losing everything, I was in Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership, you know, as a mastermind. And it's about 100 and, it was about 130 grand all in back then. It's a lot more than that now. But I was around people that were thriving through the crash. Okay. They're like, oh, 50 million, million, get up, you big puss, and go make something happen. Okay. You want to be around people like that, right? You don't want to be around, you know, this is so easy. It, it, a lot of people will default to peers that they went to school with or they work with. And, and these people might have their own fears, you know, fear of losing you even or fear of feeling less than or, or um, you know, they have their own limiting beliefs and fears and, and, and they'll hold you back as a result. And so, you know, you got to be really, you know, conscious of who you allow to influence you. And sometimes it's your family. You know, and I'll tell you, love your family, but choose your peers proactively because you tell me, you show me your two best friends, I'll show you who you are, every aspect of your life, your, your finances, your happiness, your health, everything, relationships. So you got to really choose wisely. So peer group is, is the next thing. And so right now, as you're going through this, get around people that want more, you know, go to, go to real estate. Uh, meetings. If you can come to my freaking boot camp, I'll give your peeps a hell of a deal if they want to come. 197 bucks for three days, and there's not a sales pitch, but I'll talk about that later. But the point is, you know, get around people that want more. Network people that aren't going to be afraid of your dreams because there's going to be a lot of fear out there. It's, it's coming. I'm just telling you right now. There's going to be layoffs. There's going to be a lot of fear, um, but there's going to be incredible opportunity if you're ready. Now, if you try to get ready in the midst of it, it's going to be too late. You need to get up to speed right now. Learn how to analyze deals, build relationships with potential investors and brokers and all these other people you need on your team. Align with a team. You guys agree with me? I agreed. So, Rod, okay. one of the things, a question we get a bunch of times now with everything in the economy being a little shakier than it's been, you know, a lot of people are, yeah, plow ahead, overcome that fear. You know, I want to get to X amount of doors. I have this goal and I'm going to get there. How do you balance that with, yeah, well, wait no, a minute, let's not be, let's yeah, not be no, reckless. No, 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 no. This is not a time to be aggressive. Okay. This is a time to be super conservative. Okay. Listen, the deals aren't there yet. They're coming. Now, I mean, we're, we're, we're probably going to put two places under contract today, 138 doors in Arkansas. Actually, that is under contract. They're just making the decision whether I'm going to move forward. And another one, um, and there's a long story to that, but, uh, and another one in, um, Tennessee, but a bigger one, much bigger one. Um, but, you know, so there are deals out there, but, but we are being super conservative, you know, putting our debt at, at you know, at much higher rates and uh, our exit cap at higher rates and just, just really, you know, stress testing, break even, um, raising extra operating reserves, um, you know, so again, you, you, yeah, I understand you got to have the goals and then the, and the door count is a great goal. And you don't want to overlook, you know, where we are in the market cycle and push ahead, you know, irresponsibly. And I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of that these last couple of years. Everybody did bridge debt and bridge debt is very onerous debt. It's adjustable rate. You know, if you don't do your business plan, it can become recourse. There's just a lot of danger that a lot of stuff happened these last couple of years, skinny deals. We'd be in best and final on a deal and we see what it sold for. We're like, what the heck? Where'd they get their money? I mean, there's no way they're going to hit the returns that, uh, you know, that they've promised. And so anyway, it's just a time to be careful. Did I answer that? Is that what you were looking for in that? Is that, was that? Yeah. The and I think me and Tom were talking about this, uh, before the show that uh, Chicago um, feels at last or the Midwest feels at last yeah, uh, compared agreed. to everywhere else. I was just telling, because Tom just made the comment that his properties are, he's still getting multiple offers and stuff like that. And I told him, I said in 2007 and eight, I was killing it. And I couldn't understand all these news of people not being able to pay their loans. So it, it, for us here in the Midwest, it creeps up on us even, even, right. even quieter. Yes, no, it does. It, it's a little slower, and it's not going to be quite as impactful for your. I hope, you know. I, I mean, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we won't talk about the political component, but there's a lot of people moving, you know, um, to 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 red states. There's a lot of, you know, the climate piece, you know. So, you know, I don't know what impact that would have on. on I love Chicago. I, like I told you guys before we started recording, I've got family there. Used to go every year. Um, don't like the cold, <laughs> but, but beyond that, I, I really, I really do enjoy it. A beautiful city. Um, but, but anyway, um, you know, I, I, 
there's no question that there's going to be an impact though. And there's going to be opportunity though. And, and man, if there's a time to get up to speed on this business, it is right freaking now, because like I said, I was hiding under a rock. You know, I got crushed by that wave in 08 and 09. I'm surfing that damn thing this time. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so going back to 08 for one, one last time, Rod, what was step one? Right. Like you, you dug out. It was, it's awesome. It's well, a great story. But yeah. what was that step one of like, good question. F really this, good question. Going forward. Yeah. Really good question. Sometimes you need to innovate or pivot. Okay. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you a more recent example. When COVID hit, I had 800 yep. people scheduled to go to Orlando. I had a bunch of tickets sold. I'm like, what the hell are we going to do? So if you go to multifamilyvirtualbootcamp.com, you'll see Rod's happy ass on his cell phone recording the video. It's still on there on the phone video on that website because I pivoted instantly. It's like, we're going virtual. And so I went virtual. I was one of the first people to do it. So that's an example of what I'm talking about. So if you're listening right now and you see you see some rain clouds on the horizon for whatever business you're in or whatever you're doing, real estate, whatever, you know, think about the fact, do you need to innovate or pivot? Okay. Do you need to change things up? Do you need to, you know, I would encourage you to become very lean and mean. Okay. So, so cut out frivolous expenses, cut out frivolous purchases. If you've got a business, you might have to, you know, let some people go. Um, you know, I'm doing that actually. I hate it, but I'm freaking, I, I have to get lean and mean right now. And, and so that I'm being very proactive. I'm doing it way in advance of it really hitting because I know it's going to hit. And so, you know, that's, those are some examples. Um, you know, back in 08 and 09, I innovated and I pivoted and I built a uh, litigation support company, uh, helping people save their homes. I built law firms in five states, including Illinois. And, uh, uh, you know, what we would do is we'd stop the foreclosure with litigation and then we'd help people modify their loans. We helped thousands of families save their homes. I hated the business because it was negative. Nobody's happy when they're losing their homes. And it's legal. It was just a lot of minefields in the business. But I sold it a few years ago. It, it turned out to be a $10 million company with 60 employees. So again, I innovated, I pivoted. So, you know, that's a kind of an extreme example. But if you're like a real estate investor and and you're getting ready for this thing, Talk to anybody that'll hold still long enough and tell them you're getting excited. You're getting ready. You're rubbing your hands together because there's going to be opportunity, but there'll also be fear. And you want to pre-frame your investors to not succumb to that fear, okay, so that they're ready to go. And I hate the expression, but you tell them when there's blood running in the streets, that's when we're going to buy. You know, there's Warren Buffett's famous quote, be fearful when others are greedy and get greedy when they're fearful and they're going to be fearful. OK, so so, you know, that's that's contrary in investing. And so um, can I pitch my boot camp for a second real quick? Just because I'll give in. you guys I'll give your peeps a hell of a deal. It's it's double this price now, but it's in Denver. It's July 29th, 30th and 31st is three. To, you've been, haven't you, Tom? I've been to one of these. Yep. Yeah. OK, Pre so you can speak to how good they are and, and, and they're much better now. I'm telling you, they're much better because I have lots of warrior case studies that we put on and, and people showing, you know, showing what my students have done. But but. Um, you know, it's three days of training. It's not a big sales pitch. I talk about my coaching for about 30 minutes. The rest of the time is all training, incredible networking. I mean, we've already got hundreds of, of people coming. I think, I think we're at like 600 already, five or 600, um, 600. Um, and, and so, you know, it's going to, it's going to be incredible opportunity to network. But if you, if you text my name, Rod to 72345, and then use the code Rod friend, um, you can come for, um, uh, for 197 bucks and it includes my document library and deal evaluator software. So there's some free bonuses in there too. So anyway, it's double that price. Now, if you have any problem with it, um, just DM me on any social channel. Cause it's going to ultimately be 700 bucks, but we'll get you the 197 since you're Tom and Mark's peeps here. But uh, thanks for letting me mention that. So again, text Rod to 72345 or go to rodindenver.com. But remember the code Rod friend. Thanks for letting me mention that guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. Huge, huge value yeah. add to the listeners there. I, I think the other thing too, just going back to the, something like the boot camp is there's a bunch of people who listening right now who own a three unit, own a four unit, whatever it is, mm -hmm. looking to buy a 20 unit and don't have either the capital, the ins, the whatever. Yep. Get three or four of you together and make that purchase, right? That's, yep. that's, that's the biggest thing that puts you in, in room with the other people who want the same goals. That's right. And it becomes much easier with that it's a team sport. When you get into the larger multifamily, it's not something you're going to do on your own. It's just not. You you want to align with people that have done these larger deals, these multi-million dollar deals, so you can get uh, you know non-recourse debt, which requires somebody to have done it. Like for example, a Fannie Mae loan before. It's called a sponsor. 
And I don't know about you guys, but I'll take 20, 30, 40, 50% of something over 100% of nothing any day. And, and so, you know, get aligned. But, but again, you need to build these relationships right now. You know, get, 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 you know, go to your local meetups, meet people there. If you can come to Denver, come to Denver. But regardless, get and also get up to speed as fast as you can, because underwriting these larger deals is a little different. And you need to, you know, get up to speed on underwriting. You build the relationships. You talk to people with money. You save your own money. You, you cut out unnecessary expenses. Maybe you extend lines of credit. You do everything to get you can to get as much cash as you can, because cash is king in one of these situations. And uh, and you know if you, it's funny you listen. Uh, this is why I was going to bring up my podcast earlier. If you listen to my podcast, you start and you listen to the people that have you know have five, six, seven thousand doors. Many of them started in 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. That is what we call a clue. Okay. And so that's coming again. Uh, and, and anyway, that's, that's, I, I knew there was something I wanted to say there. So, <laughs> no. so re- you mentioned some of the advantages of, of multifamily. As someone who has, you know, done thousands of single families and, and thousands of apartment units, mm-hmm. for, for that guy here saying, like, well, I just want to dip my toe in the water, start with a few single family homes and then, and then get into multifamily. Great question. You know, what, what would your comment be? To Great that? question. So I ask very often, I'll ask the my listeners on my, I'm not my listeners, I'm sorry, my guests on my show, you know, the ones that have thousands and thousands of doors, I'll ask them, you know, and I because I know what the answer is going to be. And I ask it by design. So my listeners hear it. I say, if you could tell your 18 year old self something, what might you do differently? Because I know what the answer is going to be. It's always go bigger, faster. And so, you know, that's why I ask it by design so that they don't hear it from me. They hear it from them, these these giant operators. And and uh, and that's why, because, you know, it's just as easy to buy a hundred unit as it is to buy a 10 unit. OK. And, and and you may not think so, but it is. And and because it's a team sport and, the, you know, the lender is not looking at you. They're looking at the team. They're looking at the assets ability to service the debt, you know, and there's you know, all uh, things are going to slow down as far as equity raising. We're seeing that already. People are already getting scared, but there's still a lot of money that's got its butt kicked in the stock market. We won't even talk about crypto, but uh, just got killed. And uh, and so they're looking for a home. And and the multifamily is probably the best real estate asset class. I'm, I believe it's the best. You know, when COVID hit, self storage and office and warehouse and retail they didn't get money but but multifamily we got hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in rent relief for our tenants uh um you know that the people have to have a place to live and so you know uh and and when the crash happened in 2008 and 9 within 3 years rents had exceeded 2006 levels that's how fast it rebounded so you know it was a covid it was a blip i thought you know that was going to be the catalyst and it wasn't but it was just a blip um, and, um, but I do think this one's going to be a lot bigger. I mean, they're, they're, we're going to see 7% interest next month. So, you know, I mean, I know that sounds terrible. I remember when 7% was fantastic because I'm old. Uh, you know, I remember when I first started, it was like 14, 15, 16%. And we did backflips when it hit seven, but people aren't going to be doing backflips now. And, you know, but there's going to be deals. And so. <laughs> A lot of our listeners are trying to scale. Uh, It's a a big word in growing your company. And uh, I I heard you mention in a couple of your podcasts now uh, using EOS. You've used that for your business. Oh, yeah. EOS is awesome. EOS is Entrepreneur's Operating System from a book called Traction. Author's name is Gino Wickman. In fact, I host a a, a mastermind of some of really the largest multifamily operators on the planet here, I think. We've got about pushing 16 billion in assets. We just, in, in the group, we just met last Thursday and Friday in Houston. Uh, it was about 5 billion in assets represented by the people that were there, which was perfect timing because we're all talking about what's going on with the debt markets and everything right now. But um, um, why did I bring all that up? <laughs> EOS. EOS, EOS. I actually trained that mastermind group in EOS and, and gave them all a copy of the book and brought in an implementer and get, had this manual uh, forms to give them and stuff like that. No, I love that system. So just quickly describe it. Uh, if you've got at least, if you've got three people on your team, you need to implement it, uh, even if it's just three. Okay. And what it does is it allows you to get really honed in on 90 day goals. Okay. They call them rocks, but they're goals. Okay. 90 day outcomes that you're looking for. And only one person is accountable for each one. If there's more than one, there's no accountability. And the other thing that they, they, they do, they teach you how to do these quick meetings 
uh, weekly and then and then uh, you know leadership meetings quarterly that are incredibly powerful. They've been a game game changer for us in our business. And you know the other thing is instead of creating an organizational chart, you've heard of an org chart. You know it's got the CEO at the top and then everything branches out below it. You actually have an accountability chart, which is much more powerful to see who's accountable for each one of the tasks uh, and and a roles. Uh, it's an incredible system. So I highly recommend it. Like I said, I, I rolled it out to my mastermind members. Gosh, probably two and a half years ago. Um, and, and, and everybody in there is on it. People wise, as far as people and growing your, you know, you said, if you have three people in your organization, if you're trying to buy, like, I, I think a lot of investors undervalue the people they have in their immediate company. Uh, talk, talk about a little bit about what a lot of investors might miss when it comes to scaling and having hiring to, uh, the right people fast enough. Well, I will tell you this, I get this asked a lot. Okay. Um, uh, you know, because, you know, I've got a, a group called the Warriors, my mentorship students, and uh, Tom's familiar with it. And and we, um, you know, we, by the way, we just, I think we just broke 70,000 units owned. And I've only been teaching, what, five years, four and a half years, but but really proud of that. But um, one of the things that I hear a lot is, you know, I need to hire, you know, I need to hire some help. Who should I hire from, from my students? And I always tell them the first hire is an executive assistant. That's the number one thing to get the stuff you shouldn't be doing off your plate. There are things you shouldn't be doing. So that's number one. Okay. I mean, forgetting, and I, we'll, I'll go deeper than that, but, but, you know, I, I love to ride my lawnmower and it is not the best use of my time. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. So, you know, get, get it, get an assistant. It can do a VA, you know, there, there are Spanish speaking VAs. You can get very reasonable. Uh, and of course, if it's work they can do after hours, you can do Philippines as well. And, and, uh, and very powerful to get virtual assistance as well. But that's that's step one. Now, this business is a team sport, okay? If you're going to do larger deals, you need to align with a team that's already done a larger deal. Otherwise, you're just not going to be taken seriously by the brokers, okay? Which is why, you know, going to my boot camp, you're going to meet dozens of them or going to a local meetup and finding operators that have done some deals. And you just align with them for your first deal or two. Get it on your resume and then you're off to the races and you don't need them anymore. Although you may want to continue with, you know, if you meet some good people, they'll, they'll be able to throw in their, you know, their resume, their, maybe their liquidity, their net worth to help you, you know, close on a larger deal. But that's how it's done. Everybody does it that way. Nobody tries to do one of these larger deals themselves. So, you know, if you've got a couple of duplexes, a triplex, whatever, and you want to do a 20 unit, just align with somebody that's done it. Okay. And, and bring them on the team. Or, or join their team just for one deal. You're going to date before you get married. You're not going to, you know, say, okay, we're going to work together forever. See how well you work together. You know, um, there's lots of different hats in this business. Okay. Maybe some you've got, maybe you're the person that brings the deals in. Maybe you're the person that helps raise money, which you can't just do that, but maybe you're the person that helps raise money um, and does the investor relations. Maybe you're the analytical person that's great with underwriting and spreadsheets. Maybe you're that person, or maybe you've got management experience or project management experience, and you do the asset management. And you may wear multiple hats in here, but those are the biggest roles that we see in our business, and they're quite different. Um, and um, so think about where you might add value to a, to a team. And, and that's how you approach it. And, you know, certainly if you, it used to be, if you could bring deals, I think that's going to probably reverse. And if you can bring money moving forward, because the deals are going to be there, it's, it's, it's raising the equity is going to be more challenging, but that, did I answer your question or did I just yeah. babble there from? No, okay. no, that's, that's real good. So, okay. so Rod, we've talked a lot about how acquisitions are going to change, you know, oh. it, it, with everything that's going on out there. Do you also, are you changing how you actually operate? Right, like, are, is maintenance costs like? Are you do you think rents? You are mean like asset management? Down? Yep, on the management side. Oh yeah, side, totally, you- totally tightening that up right now. Okay, and and you know it's been it's been you know roses and gravy for the last couple of years. I mean, look at these rent increases we've seen, and you know, and 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 that's what's you know a little alarming because you know a lot of these people, a lot of these operators that have put deals together, you know, really were way too aggressive, and um, so. You know, and, and they've never gone through a downturn and they've never experienced, you know, decreased rents and or vacancy and or other issues like that. And so, you know, your ability to asset manage and, and, and direct your property management companies and and stay on top of things very tightly and and, and just really um, make your community feel like a, a home and where people don't want to leave. 
is going to be critical. And so, um, you know, it's, 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 it, you know, staying on top of your KPIs, you know, you keep performance indicators as it relates to, you know, just like any business, an apartment complex is a business. You got to pay attention to collections and, and renewals and maintenance, open, open work orders and how long they stayed open and how quick people are getting responded to and taken care of. And, um, and, you know, uh, uh, lease expirations and, 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 and your, uh, you know, uh, defaults and slow pays and things of that nature. So a lot of things you got to pay attention to and be very tight on. Um, so more than ever in what's coming. All right. Awesome. Good stuff here. So Rob, we're, we're going to wrap same, uh, same six questions we ask everyone. So you've alluded to this already, but what is your competitive advantage? Why have you been able to thrive after going, getting your nose bloody and everything you've went through? Why are you at the top of the hill right now? Focus, you know, focus, drive, desire, um, you know, and really loving what I do. I freaking love what I do. You know, I, 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 lives are being changed. I mean, you can see behind me on the wall, you can't do the green screen. I've got hundreds of thank you cards from, you know, warriors and students over the years, literally the whole wall behind the green screen here is covered with them. And, you know, when you love what you do, work is play. And so, you know, that passion comes out, you, you know, people feel that passion. They, they, uh, you know, and, and yeah, so I think that's my competitive edge is, is, is my passion for this business and passion for seeing people succeed in this business. And, and that's not hyperbole. I truly love it. Awesome. What is one piece of advice you would tell someone that is yet to buy their first property here in Chicago? Get educated, number one. And that's not a, that's not a, like a self-serving statement. I don't care if you learn from me, just get educated right now because it's coming and there's, and you need to be, you got to get up to speed and build those relationships before it really hits so you can capitalize on it. And so that's my word of advice. Go get educated as fast as you can, because uh, before you know it, it's going to be upon us. And, and this could be the greatest transfer of wealth we've seen in our lifetimes. Okay. And, you know, economists are saying that some, some, some say that. Uh, so, you know, you want to, you could set, you could literally set your, you and your family, your kids, their kids up for life. If you, if you, if you move, you push through the fear, you get educated so you can capitalize on what's coming. That's awesome. All right. A much lighter question. What do you do for fun? I love the water. You know, that's my backyard behind me on the green screen. I have a boat and jet skis and yeah, I freaking love it. Love fishing, love going out on the boat, looking at my gorgeous wife and just enjoying life, man. It's the good stuff. All right. And it, we, we've already referenced your own, so you got to say something different here, but can you give us either a good book, podcast, or self-development activity that you'd recommend to our listeners? I'll give you some books. You know, my love language is gifts. And I know you got tons of gifts from me, Tom, when you were in the program, but, but I, I like, for example, turning pro by Steven Pressman. So you stop being an amateur, be a professional. Well, the five love languages, I had the author on my show, which was a real treat because I've given away thousands of copies of his book. But you know, if you love anybody, go read that book. Trust me. You need to know how they feel love. Super important. Um, the slight edge, those little decisions you make every day that traject your life up or down, you know, and uh, that's a big one. Gary Keller's One Thing. I had his co-author on the show, Jay Papasan. That's a great book. Great. The One Thing's awesome. Um, uh, Hal Elrod's Miracle Morning. Got to have him on as well. That was a real treat. So so there's there's a handful of books that are awesome. What were the other two pieces? Oh, podcast. Of course, my podcast, for God's sakes, Lifetime Cash Flow. You better come listen. Um and, uh, and what was the third thing? Any self-development activity. Self-development activity. Every morning I sit in this recliner behind me. Okay. Right there. And I just do gratitude. Okay. I do gratitude for my amazing supermodel, beautiful wife, more beautiful on the inside than the outside. My, my kids, my coaching students, my foundation, then I'll do gratitude for the things that I want as if I already have them. Like I'm, I'll sometimes get emotional being grateful for things I don't even have yet. And I know I've probably lost some analytical ones on that, but this, this is how I had 50 million to lose and how I got it back by focusing on what I want and visualizing. You call it prayer, whatever you want, but it's absolutely uh, effective. Good stuff. Moving stuff there. All right. So Rod, what is, uh, can you give us someone in your network that you would highly recommend as a quality resource to other investors? Oh God, I wasn't ready for that one. Let's see. God, there's so many. Um, oh man. Pick your favorite child. God, I, I, I'm really struggling with this because, you know, I've got an incredible um, Rolodex of people in the business 
you know, I, let me just say this. If there's something you need, just DM me. If it's an attorney, if it's a lender, if it's a, you know, uh, 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 an inspector, you know, I've got an incredible, just DM me and I'll, I'll hook you up. If I've, if I've got a resource, I'll give it to you. A CPA firm, whatever, just DM me on any social channel. They've even got me on freaking TikTok now. I couldn't spell TikTok four months ago. So whatever, <laughs> just DM me and I'll, I'll get you a resource in, in whatever needs you have. So we just leave it at that because this is- That's tough. awesome. I love it. It translates to, I got a guy, I got a guy. That's it. That's it. <laughs> there you go. All right. So Rod, thank you so much. You have provided a ton of value to our listeners. How can they learn more about you? Is there any way they can provide value to you? Oh, thanks. Well, listen, again, I'm super excited about my, it's the only live event I'm doing this year uh, in Denver. It's my, Denver's my hometown, you know, so that's cool too. But uh, if you can come, just do it. It's rodindenver.com. Use the code RODFRIEND or, or text them. Like I say, my name Rod to 72345. But if you go to rodslinks.com, it's my link tree. It's got all my social channels there. It's got that goal setting workshop you can take at the bottom. It's got my web, my personal website, which has tons of free books and resources and videos and articles. So if you go to Rod's links, you'll see all sorts of cool stuff that you can take advantage of to, again, help you get up to speed, but get up to speed now. Don't wait. That's all I can tell you. Love it. All right. All right. So Rod, we, we end every episode with a, a Chicago question, something to tie into our guests a little bit. And Mark's coming back from technical difficulties. So I'll be, he'll be at a chance to answer this. And we'll give you a shot as well. So, all right. So I, I know you're, you're down in Florida. Um, so we tied this into the Florida weather because we're feeling that a little bit in Chicago today. It's, it is hot and muggy here, but the, the question is in what calendar month is there the highest difference in average temperature in Chicago versus Orlando? So what, where is there, the, in which calendar month is the average temperature have the biggest discrepancy between those two cities? January. Yeah, one in 12 shot. January. Um, yeah, I would have, uh, actually, I'm going to go with February. It, it is January. It was almost February. Boom, so, baby. I uh, wonder your difference. I, I think like the answers there had to be December through February, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no multiple That's choice awesome. for you. Way to, way to nail it though. <laughs> So, Rod, well, I thank appreciate you. you guys having me on. It's a real treat to see you. Yeah, tremendous. Appreciate all the value you've just given to all our listeners and, and hope some of them can make it out to Denver. Thank you. So, all right. Adios, all.